Hey guys, what's up? Piers Anthony is an awesome, awesome writer. And if you like science fiction, if you like fantasy, he does both. He does a lot of his stuff. A lot of his world is in, basically, it's, it's a world where either science fiction and fantasy are like in the same world, or science fiction and fantasy are two different worlds in the same story. And there's a lot of great stuff that he had. The first book I've ever read by him was the Apprentice Adept series, and this is the third book in the series, and I haven't actually read through the whole third book. I read approximately half of the third book, and it's great. This is what got me into Piers Anthony. I read uh, the Apprentice Adept, right, and then, um, well, it was, it was um, Blue Adept and the Apprentice Adept, and, and, you know, it was called Split Infinity was the first book in the Apprentice Adept series. The second book was Blue Adapt, and this one's Juxtaposition. It's a great, great story. It's about this character here. He lives in a science fiction world, and um, and basically he just ends up finding this doorway into a fantasy world where he's a Blue Adept. You know, he's it's basically a world that's ruled by different adepts uh, of different colors: yellow, red, blue, green. There's lots of different adepts, right? And he's just one of them. He's the Blue Adept, and he can do magic. Whereas, like, but he can only do magic in the world where he's the Blue Adept. When he goes into the sci-fi world, and, you know, it's a technological world, he can't do magic. Magic doesn't exist in that world. But science does not exist in the fantasy world. And it's, it's really, really cool. It's really, really awesome. And um, this is the first thing that I'm, that I'm thinking about. Like, when, when it comes to, like, Piers Anthony, he's been around for a while. This book is from the 80s. And he's been around since, I don't know, the 70s? I don't know if he was around before the 70s, but he's one of those old, old authors that has been around for a really long time and has done lots of books. But it seems like all he's done is books. And they've made so many movies about so many other stories, about so many other characters, like uh, Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien, and like all these guys. I mean, uh, Conan, they did movies about him. And, you know, Conan started with a book and then a comic book and then a movie and then a bunch of the movies, you know. Um, and then, you know, this is perfect. This is a great series. And I would say, yeah, you can make a trilogy out of this. Definitely. You can make a movie for each one. Or you can make a series out of it, which is also really, really cool. And I think, you know, you could do um, a series in some of these books. Like, like this one can go into a series because I do believe there's like six books in the series at, at, some, at this point. That could be more. Uh, because they were three at the time, and then I think he wrote another three or whatever it is. Or whatever the details are, he um, basically, you know, created this story in this world with these characters. And that's, like, what he does, basically. He creates these stories in these worlds with these characters, right? This one here is called, is the national bestseller. I don't know if it was a bestseller, but I do know that, like... I, I did recommend this to everyone I know and everyone, a lot of people I knew that liked fantasy books read it and thought it was amazing and definitely recommended it to their friends and so on, you know. Yeah, this was great. This is a, um, this is And Eternity, which is one of the books in the Incarnation of Immortality series. This is the last book and I do think there's another book that came after this one. But at, at the time, this was basically supposed to be the last book in the series and whatever, but um, incarnations of immortality. This this is another one of these worlds where she's in that world and she actually becomes an angel. The idea of um, incarnations of immortality is a, it's another one that would make a great series because there's like seven books in the series. I could be eight. I'm not exactly sure. I think he made an extra one or whatever. He likes to just continue his series, as you know, like with um, a, like with with a few of the like um, for example, with the Xanth stories. These they're, they're like over 30 different books in the series of the Zan story. And that can definitely make seasons upon seasons of content for Netflix or anywhere that he wants to like have his series. But within Incarnations of Mortality, the world is very interesting. It's a combination of sci-fi and fantasy, you know, so technology works and magic works. So you can fly in a flying car, you can fly on a flying carpet, you know, and what's cool about it is that like magic and technology is in the same thing. You know, this other one, this is one of the other uh, series that he's really, really known for. 
I tried getting into this, you know, I, this is the first book in the series, obviously you start with this one. I tried getting into this one and um, it was hard to do. Because, I mean, it was it was okay. It's just that, you know, it's like, it's just so many books in this series. It's a little bit like, it's a lot to read. So I would say just, just read like one or a few of them would be fine, you know. Uh, you could stop at any time or whatever it is, but this is Xanth. And yeah, I read into it a little bit. It's interesting. It's cool. I just didn't really get into it that much. I, I mostly read, I mostly get, get into like, you know, Michael Moorcock books and whatever it is, but I, I do really, really like Pierce Anthony's writings. Um, but the thing about this series is that like these books can become a series, you know, and it would be a perfect series to do because there's just so much content in these stories and they're really good. The stories don't drag, the stories don't like lose energy. They just keep going. He's He's got a knack for uh, constantly uh, adding to the story, adding more to the story, putting, bringing another book out, continuing the story, you know, just what's going to happen next. He never has a problem with like where the story is going to go next. It always goes next. It always does something very, very interesting and very, very um, exciting. And that's why like movies or a series would be great because you can just keep continuing it. I mean, the thing about series is what I like about series is Never stop a series is, is my suggestion to anyone that makes series. Like, you know, if, if it's already like in the eighth season, the ninth season, the tenth season, don't stop at the tenth season. It's the worst thing in the world where you watch a series for like, you know, even 10 seasons or more or whatever, or 20 seasons, whatever it is. And that's it. They end the story. You know, they end the story. I would say like, don't ever end the story. You know, just keep the story going. Look, look at what Star Wars did. It was supposed to be like one movie or maybe like a few movies or a trilogy or whatever it is. But they were like, no, we're just going to create a world and we're just going to keep going. Same thing with Dune. Created a world, kept going. Batman was the same way. Created a world, kept going. Uh, superheroes are great at doing this. They're, they're superheroes in comic books have been have had runs from the 1920s, the 1950s, the 1930s and 40s. You know, when they all started, Superman, Batman, all these like old uh, comics... And they're still making them. They're still making new comics. So even, even Conan, they're making new content. Conan the Barbarian. Making new content for that. You, know, you just keep doing it. Like the Terminator, they kept just making new stuff, making new stuff. You don't want to end the series. Because like, even if you end it, I would say you want to start it up again. You know, even if it looks like it ended, it, it's, it's, it's something where like, once you're a fan of these things, obviously there's logistics involved with making series, but... The thing is, like, when you're a fan of these series, you never want them to end. And some series, like, they don't end. You keep getting new series as you keep getting new new stuff that keeps coming out. You know, um, Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica. Like, um, just so, some things, there's just more and more content. And what happens is, like, you build this world. And once you have the world and what it's like, you know, you can you can open this world up so that you know, whatever author who's also a fan of the world or a fan of that story wants to contribute to it can do that. And they did that with Star Trek and Star Wars and whatever. Just, just you know, people that just like the series decided I'm going to write a Star Wars book, right? Or I'm going to make a new Star Wars movie or something like that or a new edition or like the animated series or I'm going to make a video game on Star Wars. You know, just keep keep adding to it because some series just never need to end. And I do think that's with Pierce Anthony. I, I think, you know, if you even look at something with, like, comic books and who they made movies and series from comic books, you know, uh, Neil Gaiman, Alan Moore, you know, Alan Moore did The Watchmen, you know, they made a movie out of that. Uh, Neil Gaiman did a bunch of stuff that was on Netflix. You know, look at something like Stranger Things. You don't want that to end. Obviously, like, the kids are going to grow up at some point, but I think you can continue it. You know, the, the the story doesn't end when the kids grow up. Like, you know, the kids started, they were like 10 years old, 12 years old. Now they're like teenagers and they're, and they're still making, you know, Stranger Things or whatever it is. You know, when those kids like become 20 years old, you can still continue Stranger Things. You know, it's not like those monsters aren't just going to keep coming from those other dimensions. It's not like these like crazy secret societies that are on the down low that no one's supposed to know about aren't still going to continue to be after them. They will. They're just going to be on another level. Look at the Terminator. Just kept going and going. They just keep kept, you know, continuing. There's going to be new Batman movies coming out for the next 
who knows how many years, probably indefinitely. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if there's going to be a time where Batman's ever going to not be something that people like. Because, I mean, the people that started watching Batman are like, you know, it, back in the day are like, they have grandchildren that are watching Batman today, you know? So that's a thing. What's really, really cool, though, about Piers Anthony is that, like, these stories are great because they're cool. They're, because they're good. They're really, really well done. And because he, he, just, he just keeps writing them and he keeps making new ones and new ones and new ones. And um, another really good thing about these books, and I'm just looking at these for now, is the art by Michael uh, Whalen, which is like, this is a Michael Whalen piece. I don't know if this is, this might be a Michael Whalen piece. I'm not really sure. I know he did a, he did a bunch of pieces for this. I know that like um, a lot of great artists made these, made these really nice covers. These are the covers of books that back in the day had illustrations on the cover. Really nice covers. This is, this is a really cool cover. This makes you want to read the book. You know, this cover here makes you want to read the book. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I guess it does have like, who does it? The thing is like, what I really um, like about like, Pierce Anthony though, you know, what I like about him is that like, he's, he just keeps coming up with new stuff, but sometimes like his stuff is just like, you know, I don't know, um, kind of like, you know, you kind of, you kind of just get lost in it a little bit, but certain books I just find are like, for me, like better than others. Now, I can't say anything about Spell for Chameleon or the Xanth, Xanth series because I literally only read like a hundred pages of these things of, of Spell for Chameleon. I've got the rest of the book and, you know, maybe I'll like finish it or whatever. Maybe go to the second book or whatever it is. I really don't know all about the series. I would say this is my favorite series by Piers Anthony, which is the Incarnations of Immortality series. I read all of the books and I read up to book seven. Now, the thing about these books, for some reason, you know, I, I don't think I've actually finished this book. Um, and I don't remember, like, what page I, I... I read about half of it. You know, the thing about it is that, like, you know, you would think, like, oh, why wouldn't I finish the book? And it's the seventh book. And I've read all the other books since the last book. It's not actually the last book. I think that if you wrote another book. But it's almost the last book. Why didn't I finish it? And I guess because, like, if I finish this, then it's over. You know, there aren't any... You know, there's nothing else to read. It's the same thing with like um, Lord of the Rings. I read all the way up from The Hobbit um, and, all, and the, the first two books and half of the third book. And then I just never finished the third book because like, I know how it goes. You know, there's Sauron, there's like that mountain, whatever. It's, I just, you know, he, it's, it's just hard for me to read that book because I find his um, writings a little bit hard to read. Like they're clunky, you know, they're not like smooth. You don't, you don't, the words that he uses and whatever it is. And obviously like what, what he did with Lord of the Rings is he, he really dragged the story on longer than it should have been. I think it was supposed to be one book and they decided they were like, why don't you make three books out of it? And he had to like actually like, drag the story out. So he did like lower the pace of the story. And I just found that like in the third book, in the last book of the Lord of the Rings, they're just, it, it's just a little bit slow. It's very, very much of a standstill. Like it doesn't go anywhere. You know, it's like they're at Bilbo and, and uh, Frodo and whatever it is, those, those, those hobbits. It's just so slow. Nothing is happening. You know, he's like, okay, they're going here. They're going there. There's a troll. They're trying not to get eaten by the troll. You know, it's just very, very slow. It's kind of uneventful and nothing really exciting is going on in that book. So I just think it's just hard to like continue. I want to read it to the end because, you know, you want to read, you want to see how it ends, right? But still, you know, but the thing is that like, I this one is, I just also with this one, I felt the same way with this one too, is that nothing really is happening. And I, I think this is the thing about like, I think this is the thing about not only just Piers Anthony, but a lot of different series is that when you get to the end, like when it's like the last book, and it's actually like the second part of, not the first part of the last book, because there's still have things happening. I guess the author knows that they're going to have to wrap up the story at this point. And I think that what happens is like the author is just like, you know, if the author had more content to put into that story, then there would be more books coming out for that story. But the author just like basically already presented all of his ideas or her ideas, you know, to the reader. And now it's just like, now where does it go? It's like, he knows it's like, a half a book left 
he wants to have a good ending, but he knows it's going to be an ending. He knows that whole world that he's been writing about is going to be pretty much over, you know? <clears throat> and so I think what happens is like, it just loses momentum. And it's just, it goes from one thing happening after the next and keeps the pages turning to just losing momentum and like being at a standstill because they really don't have any more ideas. They, they're, they're trying to wrap up the story they're, and they're trying to conclude it. How does everything end? I mean, a lot of times authors, that's their baby. That story is their baby. They don't want it to end, you know, but they're, they're like thinking it's going to end because maybe that's their, the model of their stories. And I think with, with Piers Anthony's, he doesn't, he doesn't end the stories. I mean, maybe with um, a few of these stories, he does end them. And, you know, the thing about that is he might come back and do another one of these stories. He just doesn't end them, right? Look look at um, Spell for Chameleon. Look at the Xanth series. He doesn't end these. There, there's over 30 books in this series. I don't even know because I haven't been counting. The last time I checked, there were like over 30 books. There were 30-something books in the series. And that's daunting. You know, that's just like, wow, how am I supposed to read that many books? You know, but, you know, you just, you just read one and if you like it and you end up reading the second one, whatever. It's not like you have to read all of them. It's just, you know, you, you, just, you read and this is the way I read is like I read as long as I'm enjoying the book. Pretty much that. And I'll even like read a few more chapters even if I'm not really enjoying the book as much. If I enjoyed the book previously or if I enjoyed the previous couple of books. But, um, but the thing is that like if the book just stalls for too long... You just put it down and you just don't have like, you don't want to pick it up again because there's just too many other things to do. Right, there's too much other entertainment out there. There's better books. There's new books. There's there's other books that you wanted to read. There's comic books. There's games. There's movies and there's series. And, you know, there's other things to do. And if a book stalls, you you want to keep, you want it to be interesting. You want to keep reading it. But if the book stalls, you lose interest. And I think that these books, especially like Piers Anthony books, and this is an in another interesting one. This is Piers Anthony Cluster. And this is some old, um, I guess this is some old book that I picked up somewhere. Um, and here's another one. And this is typical of his world where it's, it's got a dragon. And then it's got really interesting characters. It's got an interesting world. It's got a dragon with, I think it's a rider on the dragon. A castle. And this is, um, I'm not sure... A, a novel by the author of Macroscope, which I actually haven't never heard of him doing that, but obviously it must be a book. And if you look at the back of this one, there's a triceratops, a dinosaur on the back. And then it looks like there's like some kind of planets on the back. So it looks like a, a sci-fi fantasy, like combination book that was going on. <clears throat> what's cool is like, even what's cool about his stories is Hollywood would like his stories because Hollywood, his characters are good Characters, they're good protagonists, they're, they're good characters. You can get behind his characters. His heroes are likable heroes. His worlds are not too ornate where it would be hard to create them, especially with modern special effects, with CGI and computer-generated special effects. You know, you could even, you know, give it, I don't know, I don't know, like, like for example, like the, the person that did the illustrations, some of the illustrations were done by Michael Whelan. You know, you can give, I don't know if Michael Whelan does computer-generated art, but he could at least art direct the special effects for the movies. And I think that would be amazing because his art direction, you know, the, his compositions and the things that he draws, not only is it technically good, but just the ideas are cool. You know, and, you know, he would draw all these things and he would actually just reads the book and reads the story and draws the cover of the book based on you know, the actual story that he read from the book. He doesn't just do the illustration on the cover. He actually reads the story first to know what he's going to paint on the cover. And, and so all of his covers are relevant. They, they're, when you look at the cover, you know you're going to be reading about that topic or, or something related to the images on that cover in the book. You know, so even like Michael Whelan, and I know he does, he does oil paints and stuff. I don't know if he does like digital you know, special effects, 3D rendering and things like that uh, for movies and things like that. But I'm sure that he can do have, have some hand in the art or even some of the art direction in the story. That would be really cool because it would actually look a lot like the covers of the book. The actual series or the movie would look like some of the covers or some of the illustrations that were done. Because one of the best things about Michael, um, I mean, a Piers Anthony books is... Uh, the illustrations on the cover, they're awesome. 
like every illustration is just really, really well done. He doesn't, you know, you know, he, he doesn't put out shabby illustrations on his books. He, he gets a good artist to do a good illustration on his covers. And the amount of content, the, the fact that Hollywood likes this kind of thing, you know, with like Michael Moorcock and like Elric, if you know the, uh, ever heard of the Elric saga or whatever it is, it's a character that, you know, maybe you can't get behind, but, you know, look, if they can make um, a halfling or like a hobbit into a, a good character, a hobbit who's like the short little dude with big feet, you know, and then make him like the main character of, of one of the biggest stories in the world and one of the biggest, most popular movies in the world, you can do like Elric, who's like um, basically... Uh, He's an albino, but he's a cool looking albino. He's like, he's got red eyes, he's got white hair, and he's got like gray skin, basically, you know? Um, but you can understand why, like, you know, uh, they want, I would say, like Hollywood or whatever, they want more of a stronger character. They don't want a skinny guy, uh, even with, with a badass sword, as, as a main character. But his, his like, Piers Anthony's. Um, Characters are cool. Like, that would be one of the characters. That would be one of the characters, right? This would be one of the creatures. That would be one of the... That would be the main character. Uh, this would be the two characters on Blue blue Unicorns. I mean, that would be awesome, right? Blue Unicorns. And if anyone's, like, have read these books, you know, like, it's very visual. You know, he does a really good job. Like, Pierce Anthony does a great job of creating... A visual story where your imagination, like he, the way he describes everything, is very, very visual, and it's not boring, and it's just like you, you kind of see the story as you read it. You kind of like experience the story as you read it. You, you, you basically feel like it's so visual, it's so described well that you can picture it, you can see it, like in your imagination as you're reading the story, and. From reading these books, I would say they they have the momentum of a movie or a series or something like that. You know, they they they, they move as a movie. Like things start, things get interesting, things you know, uh, plots get twisted, uh, things are mysterious. Like you don't know what's going to happen next, and it's always something interesting. What happens next in his stories? You know, the the the, the creatures that he meets, uh, the characters meet, the other people in the story that that come to light. All of the different things and and their stories that mean something you know they're just adventures and worlds that you want to live in you you want to be in those worlds you want to read about those worlds and of the actual visualization of that like an actual movie of it or a series of that you know there's just so much content and it's something where there hasn't been movies about this thing done yet right and that's the thing about movies is that like a lot of them are like they're out of ideas you know they're like what do we do next like do another superhero movie and just have the same ideas happening over and over again whereas like these are new stories these are new ideas and they're not exactly the same kind of ideas or the same kind of stories that you've already seen and i, I you pretty much have not experienced piers anthony stories from other books other movies or other worlds or anything like that so you know so let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like and a subscribe, and I will see you guys um, in another video. Take care. Have a great day.